three, two, one. All right, I'm recording. I'm with uh, Josh today. Josh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, Sonny. Good. Nice to nice to see you. Yeah, likewise, likewise. So, you know, I, I was going to say, so I usually start with where did we meet? Yeah. I want to say maybe on Tatiana's show, like a couple years ago, I think you guys interviewed me. Remember? Do you remember that or no? Yeah, I think it was probably <laughs> a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. I, I can't believe we never ran into each other at one of these conferences because I swear I've been to every single uh, place on the planet now. <laughs> yeah. Have you, been up to, have you been to Toronto or Bangalore? Yeah, I've been to Toronto, uh, but I haven't been to <clears throat> Bangalore. No, I haven't been there. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I, there's just, I, I, that's one thing I really miss during this whole space time uh, mm. in COVID is, is the whole. Is this whole thing about not being able to connect with people as easily? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know for sure. Actually, I'm, now that I think about it, I think we met it. Maybe we met at a couple of consensuses as well, or like maybe we just uh, passed by each other. But I don't know. I just remember seeing you here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, it, it's. I think it's only growing now, and I think there'll be an explosion. I think this is what we said last time. It was an explosion of uh, of new events that will happen after after everyone starts to feel safe again. I know, I know. I've been seeing some some videos of I don't know, just some places opening up around the world, and it's like nostalgic. It's like just the thought of being in a room with you know a couple hundred people is like oh, can't wait, can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a big sucker for events, man. And uh, I don't know for nothing. I don't know. I can't even really articulate why I love them so much, but um, something about them feels real you know in a day and age yeah. when we're all like like i'm literally staring at maybe seven monitors right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like phones and iphones and this and that and it's like sometimes it's nice to just you know deal with humans <laughs> yeah well that human connection is so important especially when making business deals because you really get to feel people out if they're legit projects if they're real people i mean i you know some people have got better sense than others but um i i tend to you know, really like to meet people before I do business with them properly. Totally, totally. So I know I, I noticed we have less than um, like kind of the 90 minutes that I normally do. So yeah, I wanted to just kind of jump right into it because I'm, pre- I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty, pretty interested and excited about what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, so just maybe to give people a bit of a, a teaser in terms of what we're going to eventually get into. So you're the founder, if I'm not mistaken, of Voltoro, correct? Yeah, co-founder. Co-founder, co-founder of Voltoro. And and and, and maybe do you want to, and usually what I do is I build up with your story. I move my way into kind of Voltoro, but I want to give people yeah. a little like the one liner in terms of what Voltoro is just because of the nature of what you do. And I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be interested in it. So they'll stick around. <laughs> yeah, well, we um, uh, we offer people to trade into physical allocated gold that's fully insured and audited and then be able to trade that gold back to crypto when they feel the price is right. So never have to touch a bank again, fully bank independent. And the, uh, the, the gold is secured in a high security voting facility in Switzerland in a tax free zone. So it's kind of what the wealthy have done forever. And now it's available to every Bitcoiner. And uh, a lot of Bitcoiners don't like going to banks because banks freeze their accounts or shut them down or, you know, they never know. So they really like to have that option of, and a lot of people got into Bitcoin to get away from fiat. And so gold is a really nice uh, middle ground for people to take profits off the table. And that's what we do at Voltoro. Interesting. Well, you obviously know in India, there's an affinity of love, I guess you could say, towards gold. Um, I, I, you know, I grew up in an Indian family. My mom and my dad, they, 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 they definitely instilled the importance of gold. Um, but, uh, but this is fascinating because now you're bringing together, I guess you could say, like the old money and the new money, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's phenomenal. You know, it's such a beautiful mixture. And I, I don't understand, um, you know, I mean, I understand on a marketing purpose, but like people like Barry Silver are like, drop gold. And then people like Peter Schiff are like, Bitcoin's worth nothing, only gold. And it's like, guys, where, uh, you know, stop fighting. Fiat is the battle. Fiat is the thing that's infinite, uh, you know, infinitely printable out of thin air. Mm. Uh, gold and Bitcoin, they both work beautifully together. Gold it has 3,000 years of history or more even, uh, some say 5,000, hmm. where it's, uh, and it's independent from anyone and it's independently valuable all around in countries around the world. And like you said, in India, it's deep in the veins and the DNA of, of the Indian people. Um, but also it, it's, it's heavy, it's not native to the internet, 
uh, but it's fairly stable like uh, over a thousand in the long term it's it's held its value so uh, through thick and through thin and every every uh, every nightmare that the human condition has thrown at gold uh, it's come through the other side still holding value and you can't say the same for fiat and bitcoin's kind of the same but opposite it's a it's a, a rare number instead of a rare metal um, you find it into existence you spend it into existence just like gold but it's very volatile it's very young, unlike gold, um, but it's native to the internet. It's it's very light. It's in fact, it's weightless, and uh, and you can uh, you can memorize uh, and a you know a brain wallet. I mean, this is amazing stuff. So, working together is a really beautiful solution to uh, a problem that I think is extremely, extremely, extremely big, and that is how do you have state independent money. And, uh, and yeah, I think these two are the, are the answer. Fascinating. And, and as you, um, okay, so okay, okay, okay. So let's maybe pause there because I think that's, that's, that's enough for people to be like, okay, I want to learn more. So maybe <laughs> with that said, let's, let's back up a bit. So I always say, you know, Bitcoin is nothing more than, you know, ones and zeros. Um, I guess in the case of gold, it's nothing more than electrons and atoms. Um, but really what to me is fascinating are kind of like the stories behind um, the people building these companies, because I yeah. feel like that's what this industry is a culmination of. It's, it's all of our efforts. And so curious, uh, some people start with uh, great grandparents in World War II. Some people start with uh, their first job, um, but, but take your pick anywhere in between. Um, where, where does your story begin, Josh? You know, I, I always had a fascination of alternative economies. And uh, I, I actually started the world's first swap site where people were swapping clothes uh, online. So they could um, uh, take pictures of their clothing and, and upload it and then find other people and go, hey, I really like that t-shirt. Do you like anything I like? And they're like, yeah, I really love that. And then they would do a trade and just send each other stuff. And then people started doing rings. So they send around uh, you know, one thing to that person. That, and, and it got really quite big. Um, but I noticed very, very quickly that it was totally inefficient because, hey, I really love that shirt of yours. Do you like anything of mine? And you're like, no. Nah. <laughs> and then the deal falls through. And that's very, very unfortunate, right? So, um, Wait, but is, isn't that also kind of speak to why money was invented to some extent? Or <laughs> Exactly, right? Exactly. So instead of having to choose exactly from that farmer, you, you don't want his eggs again. You know, you want someone to paint your wall. <laughs> But you have like, so you need to have something, a, 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 a unit of account that you mm. can use a currency in between a larger marketplace. And, um, and at the same time, 9-11 uh, happened uh, just before that. And I fell down the deep rabbit hole of what is money because I, I saw these planes, you know, plumbing into those buildings. And of course, I just wanted to find out why. I didn't believe the whole story of just it's a religious nut uh, going crazy. I thought they had, follow the money, right? That's what they always say. Follow the money. What is money? And then, of course, it leads you down this path of what is money? What what is gold? Where's you know? And so then, of course, you learn about central banking, how fiat uh, decoupled from gold, um, and and all of this stuff. So by having but, swaps. I I do yeah. mind touching on some of that a little bit. I, I I say that because I know as Bitcoiners, it's kind of like old school and we know that, but I, I just, I don't talk about that much. Like I'm on episode yeah. almost 90, but yeah. like gold is so important. But like, and yeah. people in India um, where, you know, real coin is obviously there's a lot of people that love gold, but I don't even, I sometimes wonder if we even understand or appreciate that it used to be money. And, but can you give us maybe like, I don't know, like a couple of minutes on, on that um, yeah, because, sure. because that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, a lot of the talks that I give uh, around the world is on this subject because I feel as a Bitcoiner, uh, especially the early Bitcoiners, it was all about uh, the idea. It wasn't about moons and Lambos. It was about this system is broken and we mm-hmm. need to fix it. Mm. And uh, if, you, if you think about why is the system broken, what is the system it is a fractional reserve banking. What that means for your listeners is that banks can lend out more money, create new money that that doesn't exist. Uh, so, so it you know the traditional thing is you you put money into the bank and they then lend it and promise you some interest. Um, uh, but 
But after a while, they said, well, not everyone's going to come to the bank at the same time. So let's just lend out more than we have. And, and so this fractional reserve system comes out. But let's take it back even one step. Let's pretend there's an island, uh, an island where there is only three people on this island. And uh, one day, and all they do is barter, like swap style. They just barter and there's no money. And one day, one of them wakes up and, and says, I've invented m this thing called money. And they talk to the first person and say, um, you know, this is what it is. And the first person goes, hmm, this sounds interesting. Let, let's, let's do it. How do I get started? And the, the person that came up with the idea says, oh, well, you need to uh, borrow the money from me first and, uh, and then pay me back. Oh, okay. All right. Well, give me the first uh, 10. 10, uh, we'll call them dollars, just to make it easy. Uh, and the, the, the banker or the mafia or <laughs> the guy says, okay, but you owe me 12 back. And the first person says, hang on a minute. How, how does that work? I've borrowed 10. How am I going to give you 12? There is only 10 on this entire island. And, uh, and the bank says, well, you have to wait for the second person over there to also borrow 10. And uh, maybe try to get two off them and give me 12 back. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, all right. So that's what happens. The second person also borrows. But now they do a trade. The first person does get the 12, you know, does the trade, gets the extra two and pays it back. They're off now. They're scot-free. But the first person has now only got eight because they gave two to the first, but owes 12 as well. So now we're four short in the system. And as this goes further, they need to wait for someone else to borrow, someone else to borrow. The, the amount of debt on the island is way more than the currency that exists. So you're always going to have an underclass that's struggling to get the money that doesn't exist in the system. And so this is a fundamentally corrupt system, a fundamentally flawed system built by design. And, uh, and so rather than that, you have a system, let's say gold, uh, which is found, someone digs around and they find this thing, they work hard for it. And they're like, oh, this is precious because I've worked really hard to find it. And people find it beautiful and it's malleable and you can make jewelry. So we consider this as a common um, a currency that we can use in a marketplace. Um, so if you don't like my t-shirt, but you like that person's, we can trade with this gold instead. Uh, and it doesn't matter, how, you know, how much is in the system. It's found and spent into existence. It's Why? not lent into existence. What's so exciting about gold or what properties of gold enable that? Because it doesn't sound like it's from the power of the gun or from just mm. someone saying that it's going to be a form of money. But it sounds like there's almost something inherent about gold properties that make it perfect. So you're just curious because that, that kind of leads into the Bitcoin narrative, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, but yeah, curious. There. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, exactly right. Why gold? Why all around the world independently did gold bubble up to the top why? as money? Uh, why not shells, for instance? Yeah. Um, or even some other metal. Mm. Uh, because gold um, had this, was, was beautiful, of mm. course. Um, so people coveted it. They wanted it. Um, but it was malleable. You could uh, you could change it and m manipulate it. But you could also throw it into the salt water, into the ocean for a thousand years and it wouldn't rust. It would mm. just stay there. So it didn't rust. It was divisible down to the theoretical atomic level because it's a base metal. So it's gold all the way down. So you can, you can divide it and divide it and divide it. You can flatten it beautifully as well. It just goes super flat. You know, you can see in, uh, in gold leaf and, and, and such. But there are many aspects of gold like that. In fact, um, it, it, becomes, uh, it became too, too malleable because people, that's how people started inflation. Uh, like, for instance, the Roman Empire would start to, as the, the empire was crumbling and they needed to pay for all these wars of empire building, they, they would start to shave the side of coins uh, off and 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 uh, just make them a little lighter, and uh, and and you see that that's why coins have these little ridges on the side. Still nowadays, if you look mm -hmm. at any coin, they've got some ridges to show that they haven't been shaved um, off the side, and and so you 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 also get inflation with gold because they either make an alloy where they mix gold with other metals, 
um, or they uh, or they shave it off like that. But uh, yeah, gold is interesting why it has value. So to divisible, uh, I think you said uh, uh, things like fungibility, I guess, uh, yep. immutable, you know, there's only, I guess, a fixed number. So there's all these things that made gold almost perfect. Um, okay, so if, I guess back to your story. So what, where, where does where does your story go next? <laughs> so yeah, I um, this was back in like 2001, 2, 2003. I, I was looking like swap style, Mm. Uh, this this site that I made it really needs a currency, right? <laughs> because it would make it better. But I didn't want to be the central banker because <laughs> it would bring us all full circle back to uh, the ridiculousness that we've got. So, you know how how would I run the economy? How would I? Uh, how many of these uh, you know credits? The credits, not tokens. Back how how many you know would I issue? And 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 so I started looking around for. Uh, digital money that was different and I looked and I looked and I looked and I did find the cypherpunk stuff um, and I, I just read a bit of this but it really was an unsolvable problem it was this double spend problem we're never going to solve it mm. uh, it's not something that is um, that's able to be solved so I just sort of lost uh, you know I, I lost track I didn't think about it again for a while uh, but I did keep my ear to the to the virtual railroad, so to speak. You know, to to listen for mm. anything that may be in the uh, in the distance. Right. And um, yeah, and then you know, late 2010, somehow the Satoshi uh, white paper came across my table, and of course, the I, I just thought she's cracked the code. You know, this is it. This is this is this uh, this thing that this holy grail of of digital money. And really what caught my eye was the name Bitcoin, because it was like, oh, BitTorrent, Bitcoin. Wow, this, this is a peer-to-peer -peer money. This is amazing. This is the first digital thing that can't be copied. This is stunning. This, this technology is <laughs> phenomenal because every MP3 can be copied, everything. This is the first thing that can't be copied. And Josh, what was your background? Like, were you like a technical, were you like a bit of a nerd growing up? Were you more like a business guy setting up lemonade stands in your garage? Or like, what was your thing? Yeah, both? Sadly, both actually, because not sadly, <laughs> but, but it was hard work because I always had businesses on the startups on the side. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was actually a 3D animator. Um, and uh, so uh, I led a lot of uh, big, big teams uh, doing special effects for film and television. Cool. And uh, so I had access to all sorts of uh, great toys and the, the cutting edge of, of um, technology in terms mm -hmm. of tracking and all this fun stuff, uh, as well as coding and, and uh, some good graphics cards as well. Cool. So this is right up your alley. So when you saw this, you were like, oh, this is legit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I had this fascination with economic theory as well, you know, after the whole 9-11 deep dive. Right. Hmm. Yeah. And, okay, uh, and so, so then yeah. so then, how do you validate some of these assumptions? Because that was way back early, right? You didn't have like Tesla, like, you know, Elon Musk coming on saying they're buying Bitcoin and Jack Dorsey <laughs> and all these smart, you know, people. So how, how, does, how does one use their own, you know, intuition and kind of network and figure out this puzzle? And, and, you know, eventually, like, how do you launch Voltero? Because my whole thing is building on Bitcoin. Like, how do you, people yeah. who see this asymmetric bet, how do they go on to, like, actually build careers out of it? Yeah, well, you know, the first thing you do is you go to, uh, you know, Gavin Andreessen's uh, faucet and you, 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 uh, <laughs> you grab 10 Bitcoin for fun and play with them. And, um, and, and, you know, send them around to your friends, send them to wallet to wallet, just, and, and, start on the forums and and just go building ideas uh on this open source protocol and it, and of actually i i saw a video of my own uh you can see if you look up uh or maybe i can link to it um, sure. but it's an old video of me in 2013 telling someone how it's not a scam <laughs> it's not a scam it's the future of money oh my and god I, I, the number of yeah. times i've said that that is literally my my line by the way what's bitcoin right. future of money google it yeah, <laughs> i don't google have time it. anymore <laughs> i know right watch watch the youtube show <laughs> it's amazing and you see in the comments like yeah but what do you think now that it's dropped all the way from 30 bucks that back down to two and you're like thinking it's you know <laughs> they're like it's way too expensive and uh, you know that's the other line that keeps coming out, but 
it, you know, it's, it, it really came to when you, the, the, the big aha moment for me was actually, I was, I found some kid that was making music in his mom's garage um, in Iran. Okay. And, and he was making these cool tracks, man. I just, I just love this track. And I, I, I said, I, I want to buy an album from you. And I couldn't use PayPal. I went to, and I could, and he was like, I, there's no way because of all these sanctions. And uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but this was a long time ago. I was a young kid. I didn't know. Yeah, it. yeah. But the, I, I, I said, hey, would you take some Bitcoin? And he said, oh, what's that? And we, we talked about it. He said, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, maybe, maybe he was already in the community. I can't remember. But anyway, I ended up sending him some Bitcoin. And that was, uh, that was the first time I went, wow. This this is amazing because I didn't, you know, he didn't have anything to do with terrorism or anything. He was just making music, yet he was under this regime that basically cut him off of the entire market of the internet. And I remember thinking the internet shouldn't be cut off because, you know, it, it's it's freedom of information and money is information. Mm. And, and here we are... Uh, forced to use centralized mechanisms like PayPal or Visa or MasterCard. Um, uh, back then was Bit, uh, Bit, uh, no, uh, Dwala or something like that. Like these. I remember and, that. Yeah. And, and they, they couldn't, they, they, I just couldn't get an out, like pay this, this kid for an album. Mm. So anyway, that was really the, the aha moment. I was like, wow, we don't need you guys anymore. We don't need central authority. We now have... A, a an algorithm an algorithm that is paying humans to secure it <laughs> which is already like full-on ghost in a shell stuff <laughs> like i'm living in a william gibson sci-fi novel <laughs> it, it was like I, I, a, a computer program uh, that is aut autonomous is paying humans to secure it with co with computing power and cpu cycles or gpu cycles back then and and um and, and then i'm I can now start sending this value around without any central authority. And I can tell you exactly in 50 years time, how many Bitcoin will be on the planet. I just thought, wow, this is just, uh, this is so stunning. It's beyond beautiful. Agreed. 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 Okay. 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 So then, um, so okay, then you have your like, aha, you know, uh, the what, whatever the, the rabbit moment, right. Um, you go down <laughs> yeah. this thing and then, then, then how do you come out? Like, how do you, how do you actually now go, okay, well, how do I take my, you know, my love for economics and sound money and gold and somehow, you know, carve out an opportunity in this new kind of wild, wild west? Yeah, well, um, it was, it was after Mount Gox's collapse. Mm. Uh, Mount Gox was uh, for your viewers, I'm sure know about it, but if they don't, it was the first major exchange. Um, and it was trading, you know, hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin. And, um, and it shat the bed. It shat the bed big time. <laughs> um, it, you know, we, we don't two know. People who have people. kids at home, we know how bad that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. It takes ages to clean up. And this one's taken years to clean up. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was uh, it, it basically the exchange uh, was run by ineptitude. Uh, it it the, the guy was deep, deep uh, in the shit and and uh, eventually closed down because there was hackers in there taking money or it, it, he lost private keys. No one even knows still anymore. But uh, anyway, the fact of the matter is it, it, it collapsed and this was kind of after a string of large Bitcoin projects. There was another one called Insta Wallet, and the guy just ran off with all the, uh, the staff. And there was another bunch of projects. And and um, and I thought to myself, man, you know, I lost a lot of money in that Mount Cox collapse. And I thought, we've got to change this. We've got to make a decentralized exchange. That was the first thought. Uh, mm. we've, we've got to make a decentralized exchange. And and so my brother and I sat down. We thought, okay, let's. How do we do this? And we looked and we figured and we thought and we. And the thing was that Bitcoin just its its op return codes, its programming language, uh, wasn't sufficient enough, wasn't uh, uh, sophisticated enough to to run a full decentralized exchange. There was some game theory stuff that you could do, um, uh, like mutually assured destruction. I guess I won't go into that, but 
but it's very, very difficult to build a, a fiat on ramp or a, or some sort of exchange that's decentralized, especially back yeah. then. Um, so we thought, okay, instead of a decentralized exchange, let's think of a centralized exchange mm -hmm. that's radically transparent, where mm -hmm. uh, every every um, uh, person's holdings is. It, uh, can be transparently read. The exchange can be read. So, because the blockchain is is ultimately transparent, you can always see which how much is in cold wallets and all the rest of it. And I thought that way, if anything happens, there would be red flags jumping up because someone would be watching, and we could tell. So, if this, if Mount Gox had something like this, um, Mark Capellas, who was the CEO of Mount Gox, wouldn't have drowned in his own nightmare. Um, before it got that bad. I think it spiraled into a Ponzi scheme without him even knowing really. Mm. Um, and so if, if other people could have helped him by it, there being transparency and someone had said, Hey, uh, dude, there's like a thousand Bitcoin missing, uh, you know, which wasn't worth that much back then, but it was uh, worth enough uh, to, to cause a knock on effect. And, um, and he, he, he could have done something about it, but so, yeah, that's, that's what we then focused on. And we thought, okay, instead of fiat as well, Let's do gold because um, if we can trade to gold, mm. it means that gold can be fully insured and fully audited. So the trouble with fiat exchanges is that if a bank just decides to freeze the, the exchanges funds, which was very common back then, because Bitcoin exchanges were very in the gray zone and banks didn't like working with them. As you know, Unocoin, man, mm. you know, we've, <laughs> we've, we've gone through nightmares trying to, trying to keep banks happy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so back then, so we decided well, let's do gold because um, no bank can close. It's it's just physical bullion sitting in the user's name as their physical property. It's off of our books. So if anything happens to us as an exchange, if we go broke, it doesn't matter because the liquidators can't touch our clients' assets. It's segregated from us. It's not on our books. So um, it's because it's in the name of the, the client. And so this sort of chick checked all the boxes but like it, it tied my love for gold and precious metals and crypto and I was like all right let's let's do this and so we built Voltoro uh, we launched in 2015 early uh, we built for a year before that uh, the whole of 2014 and launched it and been going ever since so just to be clear it's not um, you cannot take possession of gold correct it, it, you're essentially holding the gold uh, in like you said Switzerland and some vault but it would be under your customer's name so they would have I guess the like the legal ownership of that gold but is that is that kind of the the, the long and the it, short of it it mm -hmm. is I mean we can we send it out we've had we've done physical deliveries um, the thing is it's it's kind of like the CME you can take physical de delivery of your oil <laughs> if you're buying oil contracts um, but no one does it because mm -hmm. it's just too expensive uh, people do it and I think uh, of last resort. I mean, it's your gold, so you can do with it what you want. It's just expensive to send it out. Plus there's all these customs and, and insurances are expensive to send overseas. It's heavy. Um, silver is even harder because it's even heavier and bulkier. Um, gold's not too bad. And, and we do send it. Some, some people have had physical deliver, uh, physical pickup. They've gone to Switzerland to the vaulting facility and they picked it up. But um, the thing is, once you pick up gold, once you take gold home, it's, it loses a huge premium because now if you try to sell it back to a retailer, they need to know that that's real gold. So this <laughs> is the beautiful thing about Bitcoin. It's very easy to identify as an original Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, you just need to chase, trace it back to the Coinbase, mm. not the company, the actual yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, time when it got uh, minted. Mm. And uh, and see, oh, this is an original Bitcoin. Gold, you need to like test it with sonar and electrolysis and or, or drill into it. Um, and this was all expensive. So uh, while keeping it in uh, the, the, a lot of the gold or well, the gold that we buy is LBMA approved, it's, it's all this standard uh, investment gold. And because it never sees the sun, it goes mm. directly from the mine to the smelter to the vault. Um, it's very easily tradable. It's super liquid because it's, you know, everyone can trust, okay, that's pure 99.99. Um, gold and and know that it's not moved plus because of the auditing and the insurance you're covered for if it's fraudulent gold or whatever um, through the insurance mechanisms and that's yeah that's where we focused on but it was really important to me that people could trade really quickly back uh, to crypto because a lot of the time uh, when crypto dips you want to have some 
some powder in the barrel ready to buy some more Bitcoin, right? And, uh, and so that was our focus. It was like, okay, well, you can get physical delivery if you want, but um, you know, it's actually, it's funny because a lot of people say, uh, I only trust gold if I hold it at home. And that's a total fair enough. I really, I, I take my hat off to you, fair enough, do it. But you know, in, insurance companies, are very good at one thing, one thing only. Well, two things. One, one is ripping clients off by not paying out. But the, the second thing, the, the most important thing an insurance company is really good at is pricing risk. And um, if you try to price holding gold at home, it's, it's so expensive. If you say to an insurance company, please insure my gold, I secure it at home in my safe. They'll be like, yeah, that's going to be expensive. If you insure gold at one of these massive top tier facilities, Unless you have the Ocean's 12 team of Brad Pitt and uh, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> I don't know who else was in that movie, but it's going to be very hard to break into these folding facilities. They're like really, in fact, the, the one that we use, the Brinks one, uh, it's rated top. Uh, it's the top rating. The only folding facility that is the same rating is the ECB, the, uh, the, uh, the European Central Bank has the same rating vault. So it's, it, it's, just a, almost impossible. Wait, this is this is this. way safer than some casino in Vegas, though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, wait, twelve guys can take you down? No, I'm kidding. No, I, but it sounds like I mean, Brink. I know what Brinks is, and uh, okay, so it's that. That's crazy. That's fascinating. Hey, I wanted yeah. to spend a little bit of time on the thesis around gold. So everyone yeah. has fun. Obviously, I, I'm I my, my, I think one of my favorite like like you know to like twitter kind of conversations now is anything to do with peter schiff and his son or whatever it's just like yeah. awesome right yeah. um and then you brought up you know barry as well earlier you know and they're i mean to me i kind of see them both as like <clears throat> caricatures of like this they're playing this extreme side and they're almost doing it maybe on purpose like i i, I don't buy the fact that that Barry has no goal. I mean, I, I maybe he doesn't, right? But I mean, he's I definitely so don't successful. buy the fact that Schiff has no Bitcoin, and I don't buy that either. If his son is like the biggest shill, I mean, yeah. they're playing characters, right? Because it's yeah. it's think of think of Peter Schiff as this like nuanced gentleman who was like, well, I've got seventy percent gold and thirty percent Bitcoin. Nobody would care, but the fact that he's always coming out and coming at Bitcoiners makes him Peter Schiff, right? So yeah. so so um, where am I going with all this? So okay. Um, I think a lot of people are trying to realize that Bitcoin is, you know, like you said, the future of money. Okay. Mm. Um, and it's like this ultimate hedge against society. Um, great. I think a lot of people are buying into that. I've bought into that and that's served me well. But I'm, as a Bitcoiner, we're always thinking about like backups and backups of backups and backups of backups of backups and backups of backups. It goes to infinity sometimes. Yeah. And so sometimes I think to myself, what if? Just if I know that an EMP shockwave is not going to take over the world, I know computers are not going to go down. But let's just say if something that I can't even imagine does come at Bitcoin and, and there's some problem that we just weren't able to see, um, where would I be safe? And, and we just concluded that perhaps, you know, ones and zeros in a bank account maybe aren't as safe as we think they are. Um, and then, you know, so gold comes to mind as like, it sounds weird to say this, but as a potential hedge against Bitcoin. Is that a really weird way to think of it? Or, or I don't know, how do you come at it, like in terms of a long-term thesis? Because Bitcoin's obviously from a number go up perspective is far outweighed. Like I remember oh, a conversation in 2011, 2012, I literally called my wife. Sweetie, I'm yeah. thinking about between Bitcoin and gold, which way should I go? Yeah. You know, and I'm glad that I went the other way. Yeah, but absolutely. now it's like, how do you kind of take a bit off the table and know yeah. that, God forbid, even if Bitcoin, you know, shits the bed, <laughs> yeah. you're going to be okay uh, long term. Yeah. Well, I, I really don't see gold as an investment. I, mm. I don't. I see it as, as a hedge against inflation. Um, it, it for me is stable. I think of gold as the stable thing. I don't, you know, and, and I, you know, people say, oh, it's old, you know, now Bitcoin's the new gold. Mm. I say, well, you know, outside of COVID, we still have cinemas, yet we have 4K TVs at home. You know, why, why you know, there, there's different use cases and there's diversification. So you don't want all your financial eggs in one basket. It's like investing 101. It's, it's not investing even. It's, it's uh, financial management 101 is 
have some property, have some gold, have some, you know, in, diversify your risk. Now, in terms of risk, what what is it in Bitcoin that could happen? And, you know, I mean, there's amazing things that you could accidentally screw up. Uh, like if you have some virus on your computer when you go to send it and it swaps swaps the change address or something, I, I don't know, build some, like you don't know, you know, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly MetaMask has a bug in it and all your ETH just, just you know, accident. Yeah, we don't know. And, and so by just having, taking some profits off the table, mm. uh, it, it makes total sense. I mean, this is why people use fiat. So I would say gold is instead of fiat, just think instead of going back to fiat, I just want to put a little bit into something that's physical that that I can you know touch at the end of the day if I wanted to, and um, and whether that's land or or anything else, it's just that gold happens to be extremely liquid. You know, you buy land, it takes ages for you to sell, uh, it loses or gains value um, uh, depending on how quick you want to sell that. It, you know, gold is the second most liquid market in the world under the effects market it, it's it's Crazy. constantly uh, Crazy. moving and people don't appreciate that aspect uh do you guys well maybe i should say this one for after uh, after a call but uh yeah yeah okay 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 so for okay so we talked about your story a bit we talked about you know kind of uh voltoro and what you guys do i think it's crazy fascinating and i'd be lying if i didn't say that i i've been, I've been thinking about this problem set for a long time so yeah. would love to explore you know i guess partnerships or whatever it may be to to you know, within the bounds of, of uh, the, the, the rules, uh, would love to figure out if there's a way to, to kind of work with you guys. Um, yeah, okay, same. so just, to, just and I just also realized that time's kind of getting away from us as well. There is this like, I, and I kind of maybe already know the answer to this, this third question, and maybe I should start, I think I should start with this third question from now on. But yeah. is there one truth that you believe to be true that most others in Bitcoin would disagree with you on? And I'm guessing it's got something to do with gold. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the truth is that, gold and bitcoin aren't enemies they work together these are both rare assets and rare assets are what should be coveted rare assets are what you want to store your value in not fiat fiat is great for spending because it has such a large network effect you know every store around you accepts fiat and so you want to take out of your hard assets or your soft assets in terms of bitcoin or gold some spending money to buy, you know, the whatever you need to buy. But, uh, but in terms of savings, you want to diversify into rare assets, whether that's land, whether that's uh, gold, whether that's silver, whether that's Bitcoin, or, you know, Litecoin, did you, or did any you hear about the mountain? coins. Josh, did you hear about the mountain last week in Africa somewhere? They found a mountain with gold in it or something? Oh, really? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. About it. Um, no, I do sometimes wonder about the scarcity element, you know, you hear about like, oh, they found, uh, you know, a million tons of gold under some temple in India from a thousand yeah. years ago, or uh, <laughs> I'm always afraid like, oh, Elon Musk takes down a comet and now we've got infinite gold and things like that a little bit. Um, yeah. but, but I still, I mean, just the fact that, uh, you know, it's naturally occurring and, and, you know, when you see the pictures of the mountain, for example, in Africa, it's like, you see all these people, like not necessarily central bankers, but people that are maybe getting a little rich off of it. So I, it doesn't, it doesn't irk me all that much. I, I definitely get the, the proposition behind it. And, and, uh, yeah, I think you, you make a good, good case for it. Yeah. I mean, the, that comes up often, like whether that the, we'll start mining some asteroid in space but the yeah. fact of the matter is gold mm. is super heavy the, the try try bringing <laughs> that back to earth like Good point. you know never it, thought of gonna, that one like it's gonna be a killer expensive and um That's a good uh, one. you know in terms of finding new gold well yeah it, it it's it's unknown but for instance diamonds are not rare at all not mm. rare just full mm. stop not rare and uh, uh, extremely valuable for some reason, um, but that, that's not that's not an argument for you know maybe there's there's more gold, but you know the, it's had such a big price on its head for a long time that people have been looking and looking hard <laughs> for bullion, and uh, and it it just is getting harder and harder to find on Earth 
Um, and maybe if they go deeper, they can find more. But you know, Josh, see. it's. It, I think it's kind of. I love how Bitcoin is making these like things that, to some extent, the world wrote off relevant again, right? Like, I mean, yeah. gold was kind of like a ah, old guy, you know, type of thing or whatever. Grandpa, maybe some Indian make people sure you or... buy some gold. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know, because of Bitcoin, people think hard about like, okay, maybe I should be making some investment in gold or whatever, whatever. Um, so I, I think that's, I think that we've come a long way. I, I don't know if you've seen, well, you probably yeah, have it, but uh, I recently did an interview with a guy from this company called Upstream Data, which is just insane. These guys are, it's a little bit off topic, but they, they go and, you know, where they have these like big rigs where they take oil out of the ground or whatever yeah. they have like this natural gas that comes out as like a, a pollutant which they don't have it doesn't make a lot of sense to run pipes from these like remote locations to take this natural gas and turn it they into sort of usable. Burn it off, right? so they burn it off into a oh. generator generate electricity and run bitcoin mines with it and turn you know this thing that they have to pay carbon credits for to the government and pay penalties for and turn it into like the most one of the most valuable assets of the world which Amazing. and then why i'm bringing it up is again it, like oil was like i used to work in the oil sands and up in, in in alberta and i always oh, looked wow. at it with like disgust and it was like ah stuff that's the past but recently yeah. i've woken up to how important oil is to the world and how oh, bitcoin can potentially unlock you know um a lot of these anyways these kind of these, these like, like historical like treasures of the world like they're there's like a different way to look at it now and um and so i'm i'm, I'm really happy and i do think there's like a like i would love i, I mean i don't not i would love I, I think it makes so much sense for for someone to be thinking about like creating the the conduit or the bridge between bitcoin and and gold so i'm glad you're after that um Hey, I had just a couple of quick questions before we close this one out here. Yeah. Um, AI, because you said you are a bit of a technical guy. Is that something you think about much? Is it something that you uh, think yeah. will, I mean, when you're almost sharing your story about Bitcoin, right? You're describing how it's like, you know, it just incentivizes people to keep it honest and vice versa. And it, yeah. it almost sounded like you were describing this like super intelligent, like artificial intelligence, right? Like uh, to me, I sometimes see Bitcoin as that, right? Um, but but curious, like what what are your thoughts on AI? Um, and then more longer term, like you know, general AI, if if that's something that you think is a threat, or um, I, you know, or how I does do. humanity? Hmm. I do. I, I in fact, it's funny that you bring that up because not many people know this about me. But I I, I spend a lot of brain cycles thinking about the jobless problem of of the future because uh, you know the last thing you want is very hungry people. Um, running around everywhere, no schooling, um, bad education because they can't afford it and so on and so forth. And, and this sort of stems on from people losing their jobs, self-driving trucks are going to put out billions of people, I mean, not billions, but millions of people around the world, yep. um, self-driving cars, the, the you know, delivery trucks, uh, drones. Like, even, you know, and people said, oh, the last, everyone will just be artists. And you're thinking, okay. All right. Um, but actually, some of the greatest art that's coming out is being done by AI now as well. You know, we're getting some amazing work, of extraordinary work coming from AI. And, and so I, I think I, I do spend a lot of time because of my interest in economics, also mm. thinking about the whole, um, the, the, the whole concept of that, the, the minimum, you know, having some sort of universal basic income. But I don't like governments because if governments gave a universal basic income, first of all, where are they getting that money from? Or are they printing it out of thin air? And second you of all, it. you make a whole lot of people um, dependent for food and everything else on some godlike government to give you that in that that minimum uh, basic income. It's very scary because as soon as they don't eat for a week, they put on uniforms and they go to war for that that cash cow but by the way my last question is going to be about ubi but carry on yeah yeah, yeah. okay so <laughs> that, yeah, right. go ahead. well <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's and, and and so i i don't like uh, universal basic income for that reason is that governments will absolutely control you uh, and turn you off um if you don't agree with them uh, in, in terms of universal basic income so i, d I do think there is a solution where Blockchains have shown that blockchains can garner value from from a network effect, um, but uh, and 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 if a blockchain can mint currency, it has no real 
um, and, and can every month mint new currency or, or have some sort of DeFi mechanism to go back and forth. I, it, it means that maybe there's something there. There's a, there's a little idea there for someone to run with to build a system where it's not a government giving currency out to live on, but some sort of, uh, yeah, some sort of, uh, you know, a perpetual uh, blockchain. Faucet. That's somehow doing Call it. Gavin. Call Gavin. We need a force. We Gavin. need a global force. <laughs> we need a global. We Gavin. just solved poverty. <laughs> by the way, by the way, we're joking, but I, I, I have written about this and I, I actually, I call it the humanity project. I forget now, but I've written some blogs about it. Just, it's more just like brain farts, right? Nothing, You're nothing right. too involved, yeah. but it's, it's just this like notion that wait, Okay, yeah, I everything you said, I agree. Like, don't agree yeah. with the UBI, and it's like this form of control. But what yeah. if it was free market based? What if it was Bitcoin based and yeah. gold or something? And what if it was like instead of like Bill Gates going out and you know whatever? It's what if he could put his wealth into this system that kind of enabled, like you said, perpetual what is it? Uh, perpetual vacations for humanity, right? Yeah. Do, do you, have you ever heard of a guy named oh, the guy who invented how stuff works? Oh, what's his name? Marshall, Marshall Brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, Marshall Brain. Yeah, I've known Remember that this guy? for a long time, but yeah. And he's got a, he's got this like YouTube video from like way back in the day. Like I want to say 15, maybe 19, 18 years ago that I had seen talking about this stuff, like how, you know, cars were going to replace jobs and da, 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 da. And like yeah. how, you know, we needed to figure out something to address it. In fact, I've even messaged him recently and he wrote back. So you got to love the internet. Right. Yeah, um, okay, love okay. How good's that? Cool. So I, I love that, man. I, I, think you've, we, I think we've covered everything. So where do people, you know, and by the way, I'm down to do a part two where it's a little bit less me just asking my formulaic questions where we just uh -huh. maybe shoot the shit and do some whatever, talking about new stuff. I've really enjoyed yeah, cool. this conversation. But, awesome. uh, but where do people, you know, get to you? How do they, your Twitter handle, your website and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, my Twitter handle was J Shigala. That's J S C I G A L A. Um, J Shigala at uh, at you know at J Shigala, and um, yeah, Voltoro uh, at Voltoro. That's Volt like in gold vault V A U L T, and then Oro, which is Spanish for gold. Voltoro. You see, see, si, senor. <laughs> you speak Spanish a <laughs> little bit. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> My wife's from Colombia, but oh, I, I right. somehow got stuck in about 500 words. I, I promised yeah. my mother-in-law that I would become fluent. So I'm probably uh, breaking Get a onto promise those flashcards. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better than um, any app. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks again, man, for interviewing me on, you know, Tatiana's show the other day and coming on Absolute mine. This has pleasure. been, this has been fantastic. I love your, your energy. I love what you're doing. I'm, pretty certain a lot of people that, that view this show are going to be interested in what we talked about. Awesome. I'm glad to help. Glad to help. Cool. Okay. I'm going to kill the video here. Just stick around for 10 seconds.